Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Intercollegiate Team Championship sectionals here in Smyrna. We've got games 33 through 48 coming up for you this morning. I'm Mike Flanagan from InsideBowling.com, joined by Matt Gasson. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Mike. Bright and early today. It is. We spring forward in time as well. Athletes had an hour less sleep today. And we pick it up here after a full day of bowling yesterday. And we have 32 more games of Baker for you. We'll have 16 for you here this morning, and then we'll be back about 11.45 with the remaining 16 games of Baker. This is team bowling. We have men and women for you. Teams competing are looking to make it into the top four from this sectional to advance to nationals, which will be held in Lincoln, Nebraska in April. Coverage on Inside Bowling is in collaboration with the United States Bowling Congress and Bowl TV. We have four streams for you today. We have the Smyrna sectional here, and then over on Bowl TV, we have Dallas, New Jersey, and Fairview Heights, Illinois. Camille Williams, Aaron Smith, and Craig Elliott bringing you those three streams. It's the first time that sectionals have been streamed in all four regions at the same time. Pretty proud of that. It's been a great collaboration over the last two days. We do have an interactive chat. If you'd like to hop in the chat and ask any questions, we'd be more than happy to get to those for you. And on lanes 25 and 26, we have Lindsey Wilson and University of Maryland Eastern Shore. And on lanes 27 and 28, we have University of St. Francis and Union University, Matt. Yeah, we do, Mike. And uh, for those of you who are, are not totally familiar with the uh, Baker style of bowling, there will be one game bowl. There will be five players from each team bowling those 10 frames. The first frame, the person bowling the first frame will also bowl the sixth frame. Uh, the second and seventh, third and eighth, fourth and ninth, and the fifth bowler will bowl the entire tenth frame. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the current standings halfway through the tournament. Yesterday, bowlers bowled 32 Baker games. On the men's side, your leader, Robert Morris, Illinois men. 66-60. They are 300 and 18 pins ahead of second place in the men's division. Second place, Lincoln Memorial University, 63-42. Third place, St. Francis, Illinois, currently on our live stream pair, 63-20. In fourth place, Savannah College of Art and Design, 62-04. About 57 pins behind that, we have Emmanuel College in fifth place. And then we have a couple of surprises there. Our, 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 our first and third seeds sitting in uh, seventh place and sixth place, respectively. Uh, Pikeville and University of Whitewater looking to make a run today and get back into that top four. Uh, in sixth place, Pikeville with 60-94. And in seventh place, Wisconsin Whitewater with 60-86. Uh, currently about 160 pins out of the number. On the women's side, St. Francis is leading the way, 64-19, about 80 pins ahead of second place. University of Alabama, Birmingham, 63-34. University of Pikeville, 62-62. In fourth place, Robert Morris, Illinois ladies, 61-97. And in fifth place, looking to jump into that top four as well on our live stream pair, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore currently sitting at 61.22. And in sixth place over on the ladies' side, Savannah College of Art and Design at 61.02. Got a couple of teams on both sides with a, a decent cushion. And then we got a, a bit of a dogfight going on between a couple other teams today for that uh, 
those last two spots, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. I think the real story, and you nailed it, is is these teams that, you know, coming into the sectional, you know, you've got these rankings that are based off of, you know, the the entire collegiate season coming in and, and they're and they're split up into the into the sectionals so that they're pretty equal spread out, you know, amongst each sectional. And to see two of the top four teams outside of the number with half of the games to play today. Uh, they're going to have to get going. Yeah, and it's not its not a small margin either. I mean, let me get you exact numbers here. Here's the fourth place cut right now. 62.04. So you got Pikeville. Yeah, yeah you got 110 behind. 110 behind and... Uh, Whitewater 118. Yep. So it's, it's not exactly a small margin. 118 pins um, is, is very reachable, very doable in 32 games of Baker. Uh, it only takes a couple of good sets to get right back in there, but 118 pins, still no small, uh, small gap to fill. News from around the other sectionals. We do have that up on your screen for you on the bottom left, scrolling through for you. You can check and see how your favorite collegiate bowling team is doing across all the sectionals. Over on the women's side, Maryland Eastern Shore just 75 pins out, and SCAD from Savannah also within reach, within 100. Yep, University of Maryland Eastern Shore off to a pretty good start here on the fresh, too. Pretty solid game going on, had an early string. Possible 225 on the board, looking to set up the 10th frame here in the 9th. Which they do. Anytime you can come out of the gate and on a difficult pattern and, and put up a pretty clean game and, and get into the two O's, two teens, and it's uh, it's definitely uh, definitely a good goal. University of St. Francis men currently sitting in third off to a bit of a rocky start here this first game. Looking to clean this up here in the seventh and strike out for 198 and save that game. Got uh, notification that uh, a team has the front 10 down on lane 45. We're going to try and get a camera down there. Wonder what team it is. They're not easy out there either. So the first, the first ten strikes on uh, the front ten, three six nine ten. And we weren't able to get down there in time. Do you know what team it was? Pikeville men. So the Pikeville men off to a really good start here. 280 start on the fresh. That's kind of that's the look they were they were trying to get. They were about 110 back uh, going into today. So uh, already made up a ton of ground that first game. Yesterday they they really really struggled on the fresh, so I'm uh, I'm interested to hear. I wonder if we could uh, if they're going to come down this way. I'd like to talk to the coach Kyle Wilson 
and see what they did differently this morning um, to, to try and get themselves some better scores. I think they just had their backs up against the wall and said, we got to come in and start bowling. Yeah, it, it had to have been something. But uh, definitely as, as hard as they are out there, I mean, I'm looking around on the on the men's side. The men's side was a little bit lower scoring overall in the morning yesterday compared to the ladies. And uh, I'm looking around and I see a similar trend today. So uh, to start off with 280 is a really, really good start. I'm also looking down and it looks like Emmanuel College currently sitting in fifth just ahead of them also bowled 257 so they were only able to gain 30 pins on the team ahead of them but those are by far the two highest scores I'm seeing I don't see any other games close to 200 St. Francis currently in third, looking to clean this game up as best they can. Possible 166 on the board. The first one there in the tenth. One thing I've learned this weekend is 64 games of Baker is a lot of bowling. It is. I mean, if you think on, on average, other than the other than the anchor bowler, you're throwing two shots a game. So just multiply that, but you're throwing 128 shots. You're still bowling 12 games. A lot of things here in March having to do with 64. You got a 64 person bracket or team bracket and the NCAA men's college basketball tournament. You got 64 games of Baker here. And this is our version of March Madness. It is. St. Francis taking a while to bowl here. Yeah, I think they're, um, you know, they're just off to a little slow start. I think they're taking their time and uh, trying to analyze what's going on in the lane. Coach uh, A.J. Johnson just kind of pulled the team together for a little meeting going into the second game, try and regroup and, and talk about what's going on in the lanes and try and put together a little better game here in the second game. Mike, it is 8 a.m. here in Smyrna, and there are a ton of spectators already in the building. I think this afternoon is going to be pretty crowded again. Yesterday got real crowded. It did. I think everyone slept in a little bit. I, I think I'm expecting the same today. I don't blame them. We have our friend with um, the Jeff Evans hairdo going on on live stream as well, I just noticed. Yeah, he was uh, front and center for the uh, intercollegiate singles championships on Friday. He was, yeah. The uh, Jeff Evans is a, uh, a tour player, PBA tour player from, uh, I believe it's from North Carolina. And uh, his nickname is Bruh. That's what they call him. Hopefully our uh, single pin misses on these two pairs are going to uh, be reduced today compared to what we've seen the first two days. I sure do hope so because it, it single pins are uh, 
they just, just got to make those. Just got to make them. There's no excuses. Much better start there for University of St. Francis. Try and put a little string together here and get some pins back. Another good shot there. As many games as uh, as this Baker format uh, entails, it, it does go by pretty fast, I would say. I feel like it's much faster than it would be if it were team games. Yeah, that's for sure. I think everybody's chomping at the bit to get up there and bowl. When you have them bowled in four frames, you're ready to go. I'm not sure what Coach AJ told them uh, in that little huddle, but... Uh, it's working. Yeah, it's working. Maybe he gave them all a sip of that uh, that little shake that, that AJ's drinking, kind of like uh, in Space Jam. Everybody drinks that, that magical water. Yeah, I think so. Pretty impressive what they've been able to do. I mean, halfway through the competition, you know, they're they're in they're in nationals right now. You know, yeah, not by a small margin either. They're uh, 120 or so pins ahead of fourth place, and uh, almost 200 pins ahead of fifth. So if they can uh, if they can and save, put together a couple of games here and uh, and save this set after that first game, they'll. Uh, Still be sitting pretty good. Pikesville's ears must have been ringing. Uh, there's a, they, they heard us saying that they needed to get going and just said, you know what? They're hard, but we don't care. We're going to start with yeah. the front 10 anyway and, and get ourselves right back in the mix right now. Assignment list of lane assignments. I do. Who else are we going to see coming through today on our live stream? Sure. On the men's side, next game, next set. Excuse me. We're going to have uh, Louisville and Ohio State, followed by Emmanuel College and Bethel University, and then the last set before our break this morning, we are going to have. Robert Morris, Illinois, and Lindsey Wilson. On the ladies' side, 
We're going to have Cumberland University and North Carolina A&T. Next set, followed by St. Francis University. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the, the wrong lane. We're going to have Alma College, followed by Martin Methodist, followed by University of Alabama, Birmingham, and Cumberland. And then the last set this morning, we're going to have Savannah College of Art and Design and North Carolina A&T. On the men's side, do we have SCAD coming through this afternoon? We had somebody asking in the chat. We do. Uh, the first set back after the break, uh, after lunch, we're going to have them on lane 27. So I believe we start back up at 11.45, you said, somewhere around there? I believe so. I got to check our uh, YouTube page. Yeah, 11.45 it says. Yeah, 11.45 a.m. We're going to be back live with uh, Savannah College of Art and Design on our live stream pair. Another feature of Baker Bowling, they will be bowling four games on each pair. After two games of that set, they will be flopping lanes, flip-flopping lanes. You'll see that right now on the ladies' side. University of Maryland Shore has moved from the right lane to the left lane. They'll finish the last two games on that left lane before moving pairs into their second set. So with that good start to uh, University of St. Francis, it looks like they're only going to be able to get to 200. A couple of uh, rough rough breaks and, and bad shots down the down the stretch. Our time is actually wrong. It's gonna be twelve forty five. It was set up for Eastern time in our system. So twelve forty five PM we will be back live with Savannah College of Art and Design here in Smyrna, Tennessee. Yep. And as we make the flip over on 27 and 28, we take you into game number 35. UMES off to a pretty good start here in the third game of this set. Three out of five strikes to start the game.
It is interesting to see so many great professional bowlers involved in college bowling as coaches. We've got, you know, Bob Learn Jr. here yep. in the building. A.J. Johnson's helping out. Kayla Bandy, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Kim Terrell. Verity Crawley. They're all here coaching teams. Yep, I'm sure it's the same way to all the other sections. Shannon O'Keefe, Brian O'Keefe. And McKendry, yep, absolutely. I think it's, I think it's not only, I mean, it doesn't work out for them but I, I, with their schedules, but I think it's great as well that, um, that they're willing to spend their time instead of maybe practicing and working on their own game, but spreading their knowledge and experience with uh, up and coming bowlers as well. University of Maryland Eastern Shore, clean through six. Now clean through seven. About four in a row here for Lindsey Wilson. Oh, Ooh, good shot. It was a good shot. That would drive me crazy. I didn't have a long collegiate career, but uh, when you're bowling on something this hard, you get your two shots a game, and then you got to move to another lane and, and, and learn a new pair and two shots. Yep. It, you go up and you leave a 10 pin like that, it's just, it's. It's annoying. It is very annoying. It's very, it's, it, it can be a little frustrating, but at the same time, you have to take a second and understand why you left it. And um, you know, if there's if there's a reason why, then uh, you need to be able to relay that information to your teammates so that they can make a move off of it and hopefully carry it. You got a triple in there. Two missed single pins. We were yeah. just talking about that. Book, bookend on it. Couple of doubles up on the men's side. On Friday, we had the Intercollegiate Singles Championships. And we had 175 men take to the lane. Seven bowlers advanced to the Intercollegiate Singles Championship to be held at Sun Valley Lanes in Lincoln, Nebraska, coming up here in April. Those bowlers advancing on the men's side were Brian Bourget from Robert Morris University, David Eggert from Wisconsin Whitewater, along with Christopher Wiley from Wisconsin Whitewater, Hunter Kempton from Lincoln Memorial, Chase Benitez from Robert Morris, Illinois, and Kenneth Ryan from Robert Morris. And rounding out the top seven, advancing here from Smyrna was Brandon McGinnis from Martin Methodist. Also, uh, a little bit later on in the day on Friday, the ladies took to the lanes and we advanced six players. Kristen Kwa from Vanderbilt, Taylor Davis from Arkansas State, Ashley Seville from Belmont Abbey College, Veronica Cepeda from SCAD Savannah, Haley Richard from Arkansas State, and Ariana Campbell from Emmanuel College. If you'd like to see who advanced in the Intercollegiate Singles Championships, as well as seeing the live streams available to you today, and all of the standings from around all of the sectional qualifiers, you can head over to bowl.com forward slash sectionals, and all the information is conveniently there for you. A couple of good games going on on the live stream pair. University of Maryland Eastern Shore can strike out here in the 10th for 212. Lindsey Wilson can strike out for 204 even with those two missed single pins. St. Francis on a string going into the eighth frame here. Uh, and they just ended that little run there. But uh, single pin is makeable. Possible 235 off the board for them.
Lindsey Wilson's gonna... Well, did that pin fall? I don't think the pin fell. Replay? I think, it, I think it was hit by the rack. We can back it up. Looks like they're gonna respot it. Respot the seven here on uh, 26. Big game over just off to the right on lane 29. Lindsey Wilson College men looking to clean the, a single pin up in the 10th frame for 258. Possibil possibility with a strike in the fill. You know, Mike, I'm looking down to the right and uh, I'm, I'm noticing uh, Bethel University struggling on lanes 31 and 32 and I can't help but notice who they're crossing with. Yeah, vacant. I, I can't, I, I just, they just do not break the lanes down well for their opponent at all. Second to last round today before position round, we will have that vacant team back on live stream. I wish there was a way to not have vacant on a live stream. Give uh, more of the players an opportunity to be seen. Yep, I agree. And I believe, I can't remember which team it was. I was looking through it yesterday. I did notice that we were only seeing one of the men's teams one time. I think it may have been Wisconsin Whitewater. And it is. It's surprising enough. They're the, you know, they're the number one ranked team in the country. Uh, I'm sorry, number one ranked team in, the, in this uh, section. Number two ranked team in the country. And uh, we're only seeing them on the live stream once, and we've seen the vacancy team twice. We're going to have to talk to the uh, schedule makers. Can't get the sleeper out. It's 181 for Union. And right as I talked about St. Francis uh, putting together a little string there in the middle of the game, a single pin miss followed by a four count split and on, on a rough 10th frame as well. They're not going to get the 200. So a rough go at it those last three frames. to our last game with these four teams. Lindsey Wilson and University of Maryland Eastern Shore. A few frames ahead of the guys. That's pretty consistent with what's happened here the last couple days. Women bowl at a quicker pace of play. In game number 36 now. Other than those first two really big games on the fresh, nonetheless, I'm not looking. I'm looking around and I'm not seeing any big games being bowled at all. I'm actually seeing teams really struggling to get to 200, uh, even with strings in the middle of the games. They're they're just uh, splitting it at, 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 in wrong spots and, and missing some easy spares. Uh, so the scores are pretty low across the board. Pretty consistent with what we saw yesterday on the fresh from the men. Yeah, 
If you don't follow us on social media, you should. You can check us out on Instagram, at Inside Bowling, on Twitter, at Inside Bowling, and on Facebook, Inside Bowling. And you should follow the United States Bowling Congress as well on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at USBC. I just went live on Instagram right now, and uh, I'm here with Matt Gasson. We're in Smyrna, Tennessee at the ITC sectionals. So just firing up a little behind the scenes action on Instagram right now. Can you, uh, can you stand up and show everyone how many people are here at, at 8.20 in the morning? This place is pretty jam packed. Fully expected to get even more full this afternoon. Yeah, we are pretty full already today. in game 36 of 64. We'll have more coverage for you all day long today. 16 games this morning, 16 games this afternoon here from Smyrna, Tennessee. Through 32 games, 6,400 would be even a 200 average. Uh, there is only one team in the entire section here in, in Smyrna, Tennessee, on both the men and the women's side total. One team that is plus, averaging over 200 in Baker, if that uh, gives everyone an idea of the overall scoring pace. I'm sorry, two teams. There's one on each side. Actually, we have a, a ladies team, plus 64-19, plus 19. So one team on each side are plus.
got a possible 215 here for University of Maryland Eastern Shore. As you were alluding to, 200 is a, it's a great score. If you bowl 200, if you bowl, if you are somewhat near the number and you just bowl 200 the rest of the day, you're going to be in. Thirteen finish there for UMES. Good finish down the stretch, throwing four out of the last five. University of St. Francis really struggling this first block. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna lose some ground here. That uh, that hundred and twenty or so pin cushion. Uh, they're they're flirting with that a little bit. Lindsey Wilson College, just off to our right on the men's side, uh, just bowled 258 their last game. Uh, and they have another pretty good game going this game. They can strike out here for 236 here in the ninth and 10th. Nine viewers on the stream and if you have not done so yet go ahead and click that like button that thumbs up button give us a like also click on that subscribe button we've got three other streams going on live across the country as well Stratford New Jersey Dallas Texas and Fairview Heights Illinois if you don't mind go ahead and Give everyone a like and a subscribe to our friends over at Bowl TV. Mike, I smell fresh popcorn. I do too. That I, I'm. <laughs> that I just too. hit me. <laughs> We might have to get some. I'm, I do. I feel like I'm in a, a regal cinema. I'm ready to. Uh, I'm ready to get some of that popcorn there. You know what sounds actually really good is uh, is a breakfast sandwich. They have really good breakfast sandwiches here. I'm still trying to get over all the dust. Yeah, it is. It is a little bit dusty yeah, in here. I mean, I'm. Yeah, look at my. I mean, I was just mentioning before, my phone was. A, the screen was clear when we, uh, when we yeah. got in there, and there's a bunch of dust. I wonder. I wonder if it has to do with that ceiling tile that's open above us, where they're running the internet cables down yeah. from. Maybe I don't know. I've never noticed it before in here. I bowl in here quite a bit.
So what do we think today, Mike? Do we think Tiger Woods is going to make a run at it at the Valspar Championship? I don't know. He's one back from the lead. Does he have it in him? I think that is, uh, that's the question that is going to be asked across the sporting world today. Well, I'm sure over on ESPN right now, they're breaking it down. They're breaking down Tiger Woods' big day, whether or not Pikeville is going to be able to get in from the men here I at agree. this sectional. I agree. They're off to a, I don't wonder what they shot their last three games there. That 280 put them right back in that mix in that top four. So we have Alma coming in, along with Lindsey Wilson on the women's side. 176 there for Union that last game, and 158 for St. Francis. So really, really struggled that set for uh, St. Francis. That is going to uh, pretty much diminish that, that, that cushion that they had developed from the 32 games yesterday. But you know what that means, Mike? That means that we're gonna have three or four teams that are really, really close to one another going into these last seven sets of Baker. And I think it's gonna make for some pretty good action. Took the words right out of my mouth. Which is hard to do. You ever try to take the words out of somebody's mouth? It is. It's hard. I, I personally don't want to ever reach in there and try and do that, but, you know. Well, while we wait for competition to resume, we'll take you around. Take a look at sectional qualifiers from around the country. Here in Smyrna, after 32 games, you see your women's standings. See the men's standings. I have to sit and watch all these young kids eating their bagels with cream cheese that they brought in, and I'm getting hungry, Mike. I gotta, gotta tell you. Yeah, they all go to the store for their trips. All right, we have University of Louisville joining us along with Ohio State over on the men's side. On the ladies' side, Martin Methodist and Alma College.
There we go. We've had some scoreboard uh, moving around. Had to fix those for you. We've had uh, some rowdy parents in here. Game 37, Alma, Martin Methodist, Louisville, and Ohio State for you. The Ohio State University, by the way. The. Why, why do they say that? Like, the U. The U. I wonder what started that. I'm not sure. That's an interesting fact. Yeah, thanks, guys. Two fairly solid games going on so far on the ladies' side. Alma College, which can strike out here for a possibly possible 228. Martin Methodist can strike out here for a possible 237. Is Lincoln Memorial scheduled for the live stream pair today? Kareen Terry asked in the chat. Let me take a look for you. They are not unless, unless they are the number one or the number two seed going into position round. Which currently they are the number two seed. So if they stay in that position throughout the rest of the day or jump into first, they will be on that live stream pair of that last game later today, this afternoon. Kate Glinsky says, uh, in my book, the last man standing started the Ohio State. It's a good point. Martin Methodist with a possible 216. Alma 205. Ah, 10 pin. Our two men's teams are clean.
Which isn't always the case coming over to this pair. Not at all, no. That is actually, uh, has been very uncommon so far this weekend. Just off to our right on lane 29, we have Lawrence Tech starting with Spare next five. How are they doing in the standing? Let's check on them. Not too sure what they bowled the first set. I'm sure we'll get updates here shortly. Lawrence Tech sitting in eighth, just behind University of Wisconsin Whitewater. Uh, only 40 pits back on them going into that first set. So they're still very much so within striking distance. Can put together a couple of big games and some big sets and can jump up in there. Martin Methodist ladies finishing up with 203 that game. Good start to this set. And right as we talked about how both of our men's teams were clean, they open. Seems to be the announcer Black Cloud, the curse of the announcer. Mike Pate, good morning fellas. Good morning Mike. Mike Pate here. Mike Pate here. I just went up and uh, talked to the guys, um, Brandon at the, at the counter, who's here from USBC, and now we have all of the uh, sectional qualifiers scrolling for you on the bottom left of the screen. Oh, is it only scrolling through Smyrna? Yeah, it was just Smyrna because uh, in the building here, they, people were wanting to just see the scores for here, but they've, uh, they've now changed that over to where it'll scroll through all of the sectionals. We've got an update after 36 games too. We do. It's 
Stratford, New Jersey. A couple teams within 100 on the men's side. Over on the women's side in Stratford. Sacred Heart, Delaware State, Duquesne, Notre Dame, Ohio, and two teams right around 100 hovering around the number. Make it in, no, don't forget, we're looking for the top four. And here in Smyrna after 36 games, RMU, Lincoln Memorial, Emanuel, St. Francis, and now just seven pins back. Was Savannah <laughs> College of Art and Design, and only a few pins behind them was Pikeville after that first set that they had. These scores are scrolling a little bit fast, so we'll do our best to read them. If not, we will get um, a hard copy of the results here in Smyrna shortly, and we'll be able to go into a little further in-depth analysis of what's going on here. Fairview Heights, Illinois, Calumet, Arizona State, Lindenwood, Vincennes, currently in from the men. Mike, I, uh, I think we jinxed them. Talking about how they were both clean through five. I think we did too. And there's just no excuse for missed single pins. Another missed spare there for Ohio State. Finishing with the last four opens. 151 for Ohio State, 186 for the University of Louisville. Ninety-two viewers now. Thank you everyone for tuning in. It's early and with it the time change early. as well. Sure, most everybody's sleeping. I, I would be too. If I was not here, I'm resting up. I would be sleeping in a little bit, and then I would be tuning into uh, to to live stream to watch you. If I was not here, and then uh, I would probably be duly duly watching you and Tiger throughout the day. And I got a hard copy of games thirty. Three through 36 here in Smyrna. Robert Morris, Illinois men, still atop the leaderboard over on the men's side. 74-82, their total score through 36 games. They are 313 pins ahead of second place. Lincoln Memorial in second, 30, I'm sorry, 71-69. Emmanuel College, 70-50. So a bit of a drop off there. 119 pins from second to third on the men's side. In fourth place, St. Francis, Illinois, they were able to stay in the top four uh, even with that set, that first that first set, 70-23, seven, only seven pins ahead of Savannah College of Art and Design, who bowled a pretty solid 8-12. Emmanuel College bowled, actually, going back to that third place team, they bowled 9-03 on the fresh, wow. Mike. They bowled 257, 245, 208, 193. That is a very good score on the fresh. Uh, in fifth place, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design in sixth place, Pikeville, 285, 211, 183, and then they fell back down a little bit with that 157. Still bowling 836, a much better start on the fresh today for them. Uh, they are only now 86 back of fifth. Um, they are 93 back of fourth. So they made up about 30 pins that set. 
University of Wisconsin-Whitewater in seventh on the men's side. 214, 210, 195, 182, 68, 87. They are about 140 pins back of that top four position. On the women's side, St. Francis still leading the ladies, 71-97, about 170 pins ahead of second place. University of Alabama, Birmingham in second, 70-23. Pikeville, 70-16. Robert Morris, Illinois ladies, 70-12. And then 100 pins back from them in fifth place, Maryland Eastern Shore, 69-13 followed by Savannah College of Art and Design, 6890. And then after that, you've got about a 200 pin drop off from sixth to seventh on the ladies side. So it's really starting to separate themselves. You've got your two top, top two teams on both sides, and then you've got a separation after about sixth or seventh place on both sides. Um, it's gonna start to be that battle between those three or four teams for those last two spots. Interesting enough here, looking at the, uh, the scores a little more in depth as well. The first game this morning on the men's side, you know, there was a 285, a 257, a 236, a 210, a 214, a 201. And just to give you an idea, the fourth game on that set, you had 228, 224, 223, no other 200 games on the men's side by the time it transitioned. Well, not only that, but uh, they got to finish that last seven and a half minutes of practice on that lane, those first two games that they bowled on, and they got to break them down a little bit the way they wanted. And then they had to switch lanes and follow the team that was playing them a little bit different. And so uh, whatever that game plan was, I noticed uh, if you look at uh, Robert Morris, Illinois, and Emmanuel, for example, they had 236, 236, and 257, 245. And then upon switching lanes, went 177, 173 for Robert Morris, and then 208, 190 for Emmanuel. Then you have a team like Florida State who bowled 161 after carving their lane up, and then 172, and then switched to the other lane and bowled 244, 224. So what, if I were them, I would just not break down my own lane yeah, anymore. Exactly. I would, I would uh, have other teams come and do it for me. Yeah, Pikeville with that 157 really hurts. You know, 285, 211, and then 183, the 157. It's tied on the men's side. Don't forget, we do have four streams for you today on Bowl TV and Inside Bowling. Over on Bowl TV, we have Emil Williams Jr. in Fairview Heights, Illinois. We have Aaron Smith in New Jersey at 30 strikes. And down in Dallas, we have Craig Elliott from Bowl Stream TV. Make sure you take a look at all the things that Craig does as well on Bowl Stream TV. And right here on Inside Bowling, uh, we appreciate if you would subscribe to our channel if you're not already subscribed. Also subscribe to Bowl TV. And like I said, check out bowlstream.tv on social media and you can get hooked in with all the things Craig's got going on as well. And also, uh, I haven't mentioned this yet, but uh, there's some things that we want to do. I was actually taking a look at our cameras. I want to upgrade our cameras and do some other things like that. And the way that we can uh, we can grow is through a little bit of crowdfunding, a little bit of crowdsourcing. And uh, we decided how we wanted to go about doing that. And we're now selling merch on InsideBowling.com. If you'd like to head over to InsideBowling.com and look around at some of our shirts we have for sale, we'll also be adding some other items soon. You can save 15% with that coupon code YouTube. YouTube is the coupon code. Save 15% over at Inside Bowling. If you're enjoying the coverage, 
and would like to help us out. Um, check out some of the different things that we have over there and uh, save 15% and it's free shipping on all orders over $50. Some really cool retro shirt designs too available. Definitely recommend you go check that out. are getting involved in the chants, Mike. Yeah, they are. Red Hawks. One of my favorite chants of all time, it was really catchy, it was actually the uh, one that the Weber International University women did. They were uh, so, you know, they're, they're an international university, so they have a lot of foreign players and so um, every time that they would string a strike, uh, so if they threw four or five in a row, they would say one more, but they would say it every time, every time they would say it, they would say it in a different language. Oh, so okay. they would say like one more, uno mas, and I don't know the rest of it, but uh, it was always really, really catchy. Ohio State is not liking this right lane. No, they are not. Another missed single pin on this live stream pair. It's yeah, like it's crazy. Cloudy. It's like a, a cloud hanging over uh, this pair with single pins. Trying to get a gauge, looking around at other pairs, see if there's any decent scores. There's there's nothing, Mike. I'm looking down. I see a possible 223, a couple of lanes over, um, which is a very good score. It's not anything astronomical. It's just a very solid score. I'm looking down a little further, I see a, a string of four down there, but they only have a 65 in the fifth. Uh, so they're they're looking to basically just try and get out of this game with uh, about two teen if they can strike out. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing very many big games at all across the board. And it makes sense. Every time you oil a pattern, they're going to play a little bit flatter. They're going to play a little bit tougher. I'm interested to see what happens to the scores this afternoon. I think they are going to hook a lot this afternoon. As the Robert Morris men make their way back down in the 14th set of Bakers. Sorry. The 12th set of Bakers this afternoon. I, I would not be surprised in the least to see them pretty deep in there. Uh, but we will most likely be seeing them in the position round. 
later, later this afternoon, the very last round, uh, with them being that number one seed. So we will probably see them in front of the ball return then for sure. Yes, we will. Well, Mike, we talked about it enough yesterday, so how, how was your bar taco experience last night? It was good. It was good. Place was packed. Jeez. It was. It was pretty. It's one of my favorite places to go and get some, uh, some good tacos here in Nashville. Not very far at all from the downtown area if you're ever visiting Nashville. Yeah, that's the one thing about coming to these events, the streaming the whole time and being extremely busy. Uh, don't have much time to go enjoy. Being a tourist. No, not yeah. at all. Yes, Myrna, Tennessee, only about 20 minutes from the downtown Nashville area, just on the west side. I gotta tell you, this weekend has totally knocked me on my butt. This has been a rough one. It, it has. I, uh, I didn't realize that the uh, that the daylight savings time was today until you said last night. You, you, you get, kind of gave me the double whammy. You were like, "Hey, by the way, we're going to start an hour earlier tomorrow, and also, by the way, it's daylight savings, so we're going to fast forward an hour." Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Well, that's all great news." <laughs> yep. Yep. Got a full day of streaming here and then uh, packing up and heading to the airport and dashing to get home to Salt Lake City tonight. How uh, far is Ogden, Utah from Salt Lake City? That's a 40 minute drive. So it's about the same for me. I, I, live, in, I live in Clarksville, Tennessee, which is about a 45 to 50 minute drive to, uh, to Nashville, to the uh, Nashville airport. Here we go, Red Hawks, here we go! <laughs> I really want to get in on this chanting, it's, it's catchy. I'll tell you the one thing. I don't know much about the Nashville airport. It was the first time I actually flown into it, believe it or not. But uh, one thing that kind of annoyed me was having to pull all of my live streaming equipment to the rental car facility. That's that's a bit of a walk. I've never rented a car at Nashville before. So yeah. what I do is um, there's actually a, a ton of places to park. I, I don't know if it's like that at every airport, but I feel like it is uh, – there are more parking places at the Nashville airport where they take you, they shuttle you to your car, and that's what I do. I, um, I use a service called the parking spot. And so I just kind of drag my luggage outside and wait for my shuttle, and they, they take me to my car. That works. Little better start this game for Ohio State. Looking to clean up this uh, 3 6 10, which they do nicely. Martin Methodist and Alma College. Ladies over here on the left lanes. Martin Methodist looking to finish up this game with 191. Alma College looking to finish up with 179.
Cole 666. You really have to give these guys bowling credit as some of the noise going on there would be very distracting. You are absolutely right. It is so loud in here. Sometimes it can get a little bit distracting if you're trying to concentrate. Uh, but it, it, speaking from experience, it's, it's one of those things that you can just kind of get used to because every college bowling event is like this. I actually find it to be more distracting when you're in the, in the deeper part of the different tournaments in your bowling match play against another college and it's eerily quiet. Everybody's watching you. Another missed single pin on lane 25, Martin Methodist. Ladies moving into game eight, the last game of this set. They are a about a half a game ahead of the men. Louisville having a pretty good game so far. Nine spare, nine spare, nine spare, followed by a three bagger, Turkey. Hey Mike, I wonder where, where did the, the term turkey and bowling come from, do you think? I don't know. That one doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Maybe somebody in the chat knows. If you're in our chat and you can Google where the where the term turkey came from in bowling. That would be awesome. Ohio State and Louisville both clean through six, seven frames. Ohio State with a tough little spare here to stay clean and they do not convert it.
Louisville still with a pretty solid game, looking to strike out in the 10th here for a possible 232. I think they're going to double. I sure hope so. Looks like they missed a little bit outside there for a 1 2 8. <laughs> I think we have the right answer on the turkey. says, particularly around Thanksgiving in the United States, turkeys became common prizes. At some point, no one knows the exact first instance, one tournament decided to give away a turkey for three strikes in a row. That makes sense. There's actually a tournament that is run every year um, in Pennsylvania, southern Pennsylvania. Um, and I'm not sure if they still do it, but I know that you used to win I think it was sa was sausage. You, you win you win some type of meat if you throw like a six or a seven bagger. I'm sure, someone in the in the chat can help me out with it. Maybe Ken Ryan, being from the Northeast. I think it, it might be called the Dutchman. Hey, I think you I think you get a salami. Good clean game there for Louisville to 12. So there we go. It looks like it's called the, the tournament is called the Dutchman. A baloney for six strikes in a row for men and five in a row for women. Now underway in game number 40. Across both pairs now. Game 40 of 64. The women are almost done game number 40. Men are just starting. So who do we got coming over next for the ladies? Let's take a look here on lanes 25 and 26. Joining us for the third set of Baker this morning. We will have University of Alabama Birmingham and Cumberland's. The last set this morning, we will have Savannah College of Art and Design ladies and North Carolina A&T coached by Kim Terrell Kearney. That'll be an interesting one. Kim Terrell Kearney and Verdi Crawley going head to head in a little coaching battle. Yeah, it will be. Maybe they'll, uh, maybe they'll come in and throw fill walls. Highly illegal.
You know what? I don't think with with what we've seen the vacancy team get with get away with this weekend. I, I wouldn't say anything's highly illegal, Mike. I would I would say anything goes. Dan Slowinski, do we have LMU men scheduled for the live stream today? I believe someone else asked that earlier and I did not see their name. However, they are the number two seed, which means that we will see them in the position round as long as they stay there. The position round is the last round of the tournament. One sixty-six to finish up that set there for Alma College. Martin Methodist finished up with one eighty. Louisville still clean this game. It's about fourteen straight free, uh, clean frames there for them. And a good strike there in the fifth. Pretty solid game halfway through. It's amazing how much faster the women get done over the men. Across the board. Yeah. We're about halfway done through this first block of four Baker sets this morning. We might get done so early that uh, it's, it, places won't be serving lunch yet. Uh, you're right. I want like some pretzel bites. That sounds good to me today. Pretzel bites, like you want like some like snacky bar food. We could go back to V-Dubs. 
get some beer cheese pretzels and yeah but they, they don't i don't know I, I think their food's a little overrated really yeah we could go to toots we could i don't know what time toots opens we should go find a nice brunch nice brunch and sit on the same side of the table exactly <laughs> University of Louisville with another solid game going here, looking for 247 off the sheet. through the face there, but uh, fortunate enough for a strike. An unfortunate tenth frame there, going gutter eight on a turkey. Two oh three, not a bad game, but they could have had a lot more there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they're not totally out of the mix yet. I mean, for their, they're four hundred back, um, and they're still. Still 24 games of Baker left. 24, actually, yeah, 28 games of Baker left. Sorry, 24 games. State just finishing up here, getting the crossover. A 
Hospital 179. I don't know what the holdup is on the ladies coming down here, but uh, it'll be nice for our uh, graphics and pace of play that they're not here yet. State bringing in a new bowler, throw the fill shot. Taking a lot of time here. So 159 for Ohio State. And while we wait for our teams to come in here, we will show you the scores from around the sectionals.
getting underway again here in this third set of Baker this morning. Emmanuel College, lane 27, Bethel University, lane 28. University of the Cumberlands, lane 26, and University of Alabama, Birmingham on lane 25. Tyler Del Rose, our St. Francis on live stream at all today. The St. Francis men were on live stream the first set of Bakers this morning, if you want to rewind back and watch that. I will double check and see if the ladies are going to be joining us today. The St. Fran Francis ladies will be joining us in the second to last round of the day. Um, and they are leading by a decent amount, so chances are they will still be in the top at least two positions, which means they will bowl the last two matches on the live stream this afternoon after lunch. I'd like everybody to take a look at our stream now. I did a little bit of housekeeping and I was talking about the dust in the facility. And I just went while I had that uh, score scrolling and I cleaned the lenses. And to me, it looks like everything is a lot crisper on your screen. We had a dust issue that I didn't even think about, but while we had a little bit of dead time, I went up and got an alcohol swab and a uh, a piece a towel, and I just cleaned the lens and uh, changed the settings on the camera a little bit, cool it up a little bit so it's not quite as uh, sunny looking in here. And, I, and I'm pretty pleased with what it's done with the uh, with the picture quality. But this is one of the dustiest bowling centers I've ever been in. And uh, just trying to make things look better for you guys, but I'm way happier with, uh, with the picture quality now. So I apologize for what we had earlier. You know, Mike, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about it too. We are sitting right by the front doors. I'm wondering if it might be a little pollen as well. I mean, those doors are constantly opening and closing. People are going in and out for... Uh, talk on the cell phone or whatever they're doing. It is about 65 degrees out. It's uh, peak time for that pollen. 
Could be. I don't know. Reading pretzels now, too, in the booth, by the way, just so you know. So if you hear that crunch. Interesting that the men are now ahead of the women. Yeah, there was a long break here. Um, I'm not sure what happened. Um, uh, the Cumberland, University of Cumberland was down here waiting for their lane companions to, to get down here. The University of Alabama, Birmingham. wonder if there was a lane breakdown down on the ladies' side or something that uh, held them up. But, uh, yes, the men are about a half a game ahead. But I do expect the ladies to catch back up. And Tyler, if you can see lane 29 just to the right of Bethel, the University of St. Francis is bowling on lane 29 right now. They're bowling on lane 29 and 30. So although you can't really see them, you can see the balls going down the lane. And they've started this ninth game with a double. This is game number nine, isn't it? This is game number 41. 41. Now that everybody's here to start game 41, we change our graphic. Now we'll be changing the graphic when the women are completed as opposed to the men. Men are in game 41 and the women I've just started game 41. We will bring you through 48 this morning and then come back at 1245 Central for the remaining 16 games of Baker team play. Glad you're with us this morning, watching wherever you are here on Inside Bowling in collaboration with Bowl TV this weekend. I'd like to thank the United States Bowling Congress for the opportunity to work with them this weekend. Along with Craig Elliott from Bowlstream TV. It always, uh, always brings a smile to my face when I know that we can work together in the sport of bowling. I appreciate the USBC trusting myself and Matt to be able to do the job here to bring you this competition here in Smyrna, Tennessee. I know often when you tune into Inside Bowling, we like to call ourselves the MTV of streaming and bowling. And uh, we just appreciate everybody uh, enjoying and supporting the channel in the way that we provide the coverage, which is a little bit different at times. We like to have a good time. It's a little bit more like a radio broadcast. Sometimes you just gotta talk about whatever comes to our mind. I mean, we love bowling. We're purists. Like you know, we 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 can mix it up with the best of them. Talking about you know the history of the game and understanding ball motion and you know just what's really going on with our experience and stuff. But at the same time, you know, we're talking about 64 games. 64 games of Baker team competition with no cuts, no bonus pins, 
know nothing. And there comes a point in time during the broadcast that we have to talk about other things. It's just... And as long as we provide the scores for you and the pictures, you get to see exactly what you wanted to see to begin with. So we do appreciate all the interaction in the chat as well. Up to 132 viewers. If you have not done so yet, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button, give us a like. Click on that subscribe button, give Inside Bowling a subscribe as well. We've got three other live streams going on across the country covering the other sections. Fairview Heights, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, and Stratford, New Jersey on Bowl TV. Go ahead and give them a like and a subscribe as well. Let's get as many viewers as possible for all of the different sections. animated here. Yeah, I think everyone's starting to wake up a little bit. It was early morning for everyone. Everyone's got the competitive juices flowing now. Everyone's loose. Um, and uh, not only that, but it's starting to come down to the wire. I mean, we're, we're creeping up on the halfway point to the day. And uh, as we come back from lunch, those final 16 games are going to be very, very emotional. They're going to be loud. It's going to be close. And uh, you're not going to want to miss it. Emmanuel College with 192 to start this set off. Still don't have any updated standings from this last set. Hopefully going to get some here shortly. I did hear that the Robert Morris men bowled 907. That's that's big. That's good. So they will maintain that lead and probably extend it. Emmanuel College was in third after uh, after the first four this morning. They had a really big 903 block on the fresh. It was a really really good score there. We do have standings after 40 games on the scroller. 
After 44 games in Stratford, William Patterson, Weber International, Moorhead State, Notre Dame. Currently in in the men's division. Over on the women's side. In Stratford, New Jersey. Sacred Heart, Delaware State, Duquesne, Notre Dame, Ohio. Weber International now outside. Of the, of the top. Outside looking in. For, yeah, minus 55 in Stratford. Here we have Pikeville. RMU, yeah. Lincoln Memorial, Pikeville now up to third. Pikeville has made their way from, I believe they started the day in ninth. Let me double check that. I'm sorry, Pikeville started the day in sixth. And boy, it's close on the women's side. St. Francis, Alabama, Birmingham, Maryland Eastern Shore, SCAD, two teams within 50. Is it the Emmanuel College from Georgia? Jay Francois. I believe they are the Emmanuel College Lions. Let's double check that. Yeah, it looks like it, Georgia. They should be bringing us a sheet any minute now. Okay. Mike, when we get those new scores, I'm going to go ahead and run through and kind of give an update, and then uh, you can go ahead and, and I know you like to be, uh, you're a numbers guy, I know you like to be analytical. I'll let you run through and see if you can find some interesting trends and, and see what's going on. Yeah, I've, I've, it's gotten really tight here. It has, yeah. I mean, at one point yesterday, there was a, a two-pin difference between three teams in, uh, in third, fourth, and fifth. Or maybe it was fourth, fifth, and sixth place. But either way, it's a two-pin two difference between three teams. Emmanuel on the men's side is two pins out now. Scad, Savannah, 69 out. And we have Emmanuel on the live stream pair now. Nice 209 on the board. for Cumberland. UAB can still bowl 221, or 224, or no, 221 it is. And they're clean. Clean is always good. Especially on these pairs. Yes. I mean, really looking across the, the overall scoring pace, if you if you stay clean, and you bowl like high, you know mid to 190s, you're you're gonna be good. I mean, yeah, there's, right. there's only two there's only two teams averaging over 200. And actually, uh, after 36 games, there's only one team averaging over 200. The St. Francis Illinois ladies are three pins shy of averaging over 200 for the weekend so far. Side, we have two teams within 50 pins. Yeah, it is. Um, it is tight. It's tight on both sides. Uh, I'm surprised. We're, we're going to take a look here in, at these scores that are scrolling. I want to see exactly where Wisconsin Whitewater is at. I'm just, I'm just really shocked that they have not been able to make a move into that top four yet. In 
Fairview Heights. It's about locked up. Smyrna, Tennessee. Wisconsin Whitewater still 171 pin, pins back of fourth place on the men's side. They are the top ranked team here in this section, the second ranked overall team in the country going into the tournament. Is it weird that Whitewater's women's team is in a different sectional? Um, so I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe that the because the men are an ITC team, they don't have a choice of where they go. And because the women's team is an NCAA team, and they don't typically participate in the ITCs, they don't have a, a ranking. So they weren't forced to go somewhere, and they pick the closer sectional to uh, Milwaukee, which is where kind of Whitewater area is from. So being the number two seed, uh, you don't really have a, a major choice in where you go. We do have a hard copy of the scores after 40 games. Robert Morris men, 193, 266, 223, 225 that last set. They have increased their lead to almost 400 pins. 393 pins ahead of second place. Lincoln Memorial. Robert Morris, Illinois with 83-89. Lincoln Memorial, 79-96. They are 200 pins ahead of third. Those two teams separating themselves from the field. Pikeville now in third place. 236, 186, 191, 247 that last set. 77-90, they are 37 pins ahead of fourth. St. Francis, Illinois, 77-63. Only two pins back from them, Emmanuel. And Emmanuel finished their last set with 146, 149. Gave away some pins there. Just behind them, Savannah College of Art and Design. 76, 94, so they are about 70 or so pins back and then about 100 back from them, Wisconsin Whitewater. On the women's side, St. Francis still on the lead, 79-73. And they saved themselves that set. They started with 173, 134, and then switched lanes and bowled 202, 267. Alabama Birmingham in second place. We ha currently have them on the left lane on the live stream. 77-29 they have. 
77-16 for Maryland Eastern Shore. Maryland Eastern Shore with a pretty big set to jump from, I believe they were in fifth, up to third. 77-14 for Savannah College of Art and Design and RMU in fifth. 76-96, Pikeville in seventh, sorry, sixth, 76-67. They are 240 pins ahead of seventh. So it looks like there are about, there is one team pulling away in the ladies and second through sixth are all within about 60 pins of one another. Anything could happen there. Let's keep, we'll have to keep an eye on that as these, uh, these last two sets finish up this morning and we go and head into the afternoon. But um, it's just gonna be an exciting one there on the ladies side. I wanna give a shout out to Jonetta Trailer says, thanks for streaming, watching my daughter Jasmine. She's the anchor from Cumberland's, and I'm watching from California. Well, we're glad you're tuning in today. And looking over these stats here, Matt. Over on the men's side. You know, you talked about a Pikeville, you know, 236, 186, 191, 247. They find themselves up in third. Manuel goes backwards with 182, 234, and in a pair of 140s. Lawrence Tuck and Lindsey Wilson both bowled three games over 200, but had a 158 and 162 to go with it. Bethel all the way down in 17th position. Their last four games was really good. 195, 197, 206, 243. For a 17th place team, just shows they're not giving up. Absolutely. Emmanuel struggling a little bit so far on this pair. 177 that game. And yeah, that rocker, that roller coaster ride for St. Francis, 173, 134, 202, 267. That's just a roller coaster ride there. Yeah, absolutely. They were able to save that 134 there with that 260. But um, they, they've pretty much, they've separated themselves a little bit. They're 250 pins ahead of, of second place on the ladies' side. So uh, they're not uh, they're not sweating it too much. They got a decent cushion. They just got to keep doing what they've been doing. But um, that that second to sixth place uh, separation there on the ladies' side is uh, it's tightening up big time. Yeah, and you know Pikeville they bowled 133 game 40, and Scad bowled 226, and Scad now finds themselves in fourth, Pikeville in sixth. North Carolina A&T quietly moving up in the standings. They're a little bit far back, but um, at one point yesterday, I believe they were in 15th place. Yep, yes they were. They will be joining us next on the live stream pair along with SCADS, Savannah College of Art and Design for the ladies. Earlier we were talking about Wisconsin Whitewater and they don't get to pick where they go. It's just a matter of they don't have to travel together. because their rankings were so far off between the men and the women, that's why they ended up in separate conferences, we were told. Right. Or se separate uh, sectionals. sectionals. 
Yeah, they and they really shouldn't have any ranking at all because I don't believe they bowled in any ITC uh, tournaments throughout the season with them being NCAA. Or if they did, it may have only been one. The NCAA is a little bit different. Uh, there's only a certain amount of competition days that, uh, that you're allowed to have throughout the season. And you can't go over that allotment, so teams have to kind of budget that. So the teams who compete in the, the NCAA teams who do compete in sectionals um, and, and potentially nationals on the ITC side uh, typically bowl a few less tournaments throughout the year so they can save up their competition days. Pair of two twenties here maybe on the ladies side. Yeah, one more strike here for the University of Alabama Birmingham. We'll get them into the high two teens, low two twenties. Double in the 10th frame. It's a nice change here seeing teams finish out in the 10th. We haven't seen that a lot on these two pairs. No, we have not. And as they switch lanes, we go into game number 43. The men, of course, already are in game 43. I was just uh, sent a message from uh, Matt Nantes, the coach of Louisiana Tech University NCAA school to inform me that the NCAA teams also only get tier two points for all the events that they participate in. Even if it's a tier one event, they're not eligible to receive tier one points.
little bit of struggles going on on lanes 27 and 28 as they flop lanes. Both teams still can save 200 by striking out. University of Alabama, Birmingham ladies on lane 26. Got a turkey going up in the sixth frame. Looking to put together a little string here. A little bit light there, 2-4.
Emmanuel College able to bail this game out a little bit in the 190s. Austin Loudon, where is Pikeville men's at after their first two, after their two big blocks? So they jumped all the way into third. They are 96 over so far today. They are about 29 pins ahead of fifth. It's kind of tight in there through through that third to about fifth or sixth spot on the men's side. And then in seventh, about 100 pins behind sixth is University of Wisconsin Whitewater. As a reminder, coaches and parents, we are serving lunch today. It is uh, soup, uh, three different kinds of soup, I believe. Sandwiches, grilled cheese, I believe. Uh, chips, salad, drinks, uh, all of that. And uh, you can get your ticket at the front counter and we ask that you please do that uh, whenever you can, as soon as you can, so we can go ahead and get it. Come start at uh, planning for that. Again, buy those tickets up here at the front counter. Thank you. Wrapping up game number 43 for the women. First shot in the 10th is a strike for UAB. That's right, I didn't realize that the women were behind the men. I've been so used to it the other way around. Yeah, it's been one way the whole weekend and now, now it's flipped. University of Alabama, Birmingham looking to double here in the 10th and get them into the high 190s or possible 200. A little light, looks like a 245, maybe a bucket. 245 it is. The Pikeville ladies have dropped down to sixth place. Had a rough go at it the last couple of games. Um, pretty much all morning this morning, they've had a rough go at it. 189, 161, 220, 184, 186, 161, 171, and a 133. They are only about 50 pins, 60 pins out of that top four spot. It is very tight there between second and sixth on the ladies' side. Anything could happen. We head into game 44. And this is something that I haven't seen any of the other teams do yet. Uh, maybe I just haven't noticed it. I, it looks like um, one of the kids from the bench on Robert Morris, uh, who is not currently bowling right now, has come down to scout out uh, this next pair that they're heading to.
Hey Matt, what is your opinion on the best one ball from EBI? I'm assuming he is referring to uh, the real one and the, the big one and the infinite one. Or just your favorite one Or just my, one favorite, ball. One, my favorite one ball. Um, that's a tough one. Um, I, I, this, we have four brands. Um, they're all really good, and they all serve a different purpose. So uh, my favorite ball on one condition uh, might not be my favorite ball on another condition. Um, my my arsenal, I, I try to keep it as well-rounded as I can. Um, I, but I would have to say, right now, in, in this, uh, this new wave of balls, uh, my three favorite balls uh, would have to be the, uh, the Hammer Ripped Solid. Um, in my opinion, that is the, the best strong, uh, dull, asymmetric bowling ball that I have thrown in a really long time. It's, it's uniquely different um, in, in the way that it continues down the lane where those, those stronger asymmetric balls typically don't. Um, followed by the Game Breaker 3, just an amazing tournament condition ball. Um, and then the track Ultra Heat. Uh, that ball has been phenomenal, phenomenal for me as well. Uh, a shiny ball that, that hooks in oil the right way and doesn't, uh, doesn't overhook off of the dry. So th those are my three uh, most used right now. I see this Bethel University here. Don't know a lot about them, but one thing uh, that I do remember about the name Bethel is I used to play Madden, where you would draft your teams. About 10 years ago, when you did the player draft, there was a guy that was a 99 on speed, a wide receiver, the last name Bethel. I thought, I thought you were gonna say he was from Bethel. No, no, it just had a 99 speed. I don't know where he went. So, back when I was playing Madden a lot, I, uh, I created a character <laughs> named Billy Gasson, my dad, and I, I put his height and his weight at the max. So he was about seven feet tall, about 500 pounds, and I put all of his uh, stats at max also. And uh, he's just this guy who's towering over everybody else with like 99 speed trucking over everybody. It was pretty fun to watch. I think there's a Facebook video somewhere on my page of it. Billy Gasson. Oh, it was classic. I, every time I played with him, I was hysterical. So Matt and I played a little Madden at his apartment uh, going on over a year ago or so. And, um, you know, when you play a person in, you know, two people in the same room, you can see the other guy's plays, and you can start to develop, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a feel for uh, how they play and whatnot. I considered quitting the game because I was getting blown out so bad in the games that I played against them. So recently, I said, you know, hey, why don't we, why don't we go online, like what I'm used to playing? And I will, I'll go ahead and stop you right there and, and point out the fact that. I had not played, I had not even turned on my PlayStation. Right, right. Since we had last played. Yes. So he had been getting some practice in as well while I was a little bit rusty. Go ahead and continue. Do you remember the score of the game? I don't remember the score of the game. I just, I don't think I scored. You didn't? Yeah. I shut you out. I was the Minnesota Vikings and you were the precious Dallas Cowboys. I was. And I believe the final was 31-0. Uh, it was. So... Matt has not. And my PlayStation has not turned back on since then, for right. the record. He hasn't hit me back to play again, but uh, currently right now, between the two of us, I am the reigning Madden champion online but, but gaming. But the, the, overall, the overall Madden record is about 50 to 1. Oh, it is, yeah, playing at your house. <laughs> Home field advantage. But you haven't ever even scored a point against me in online, online play. It was also the first time that we had played the new Madden, which is much different than the previous Maddens. That's true. 
Fly Eagles Fly. Is there any way we can get this guy out of the chat? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go Cowboys. Aren't they talking about the Robert Morris Eagles? No. Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> I tried. Although I do, I do at times think that we just basically stole the Eagles logo for Robert Morris and just kind of painted it maroon. I'm pretty sure it's the same Eagle. New team swarming, waiting to get in here. More missed single pins here for Emmanuel. It's not good. There were two pins out going into this set. Looking to get what they can out of this game. They still have a possible 206 on the board. Making an announcement of what the, the food different, is. The different so. soup options for the day. Yeah. Chicken tortilla tomato or what was it? Chicken noodle? Yeah, I think so. What would you pick? I'm not a soup guy. I, I tend to not be either, but I, I don't mind it. Uh, my favorite kind of soup is French onion soup and a sourdough bread bowl at Panera. I like any type of soup with seafood. I like uh, uh, cream of crab soup. That's my favorite. Starting to talk about food. Must be getting close to lunch. It's 10.34. We have about 45 minutes, four games to go on this stream and then we'll be back with 16 more for you at 12.45 today. The break isn't really all that long. I'm not sure what we're gonna be able to do as far as food is concerned. Over on the men's side, they're gonna be switching pairs here in just a minute. We have Robert Morris, Illinois, and Lindsey Wilson coming to join us on the live stream pair, lanes 27 and 28. The men and the women are gonna be just about even now. Yeah, I, I had a feeling they'd catch back up.
too bad that 10 didn't fall. Possible 190 here for the Cumberlands. I feel like that's like a village of people. The Cumberlands. Yeah, where are you going to retire? Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to just retire off to the Cumberlands. I'm going to get the uh, the three-bedroom villa. The Cumberlands. There's actually a... Um, I'm not too sure exactly where this one's located, but there is a, uh, a place in Maryland called Cumberland, Maryland. Um, there's like a lot of... Uh, Golf, what kind of resort type places, golfing and, and uh, skiing. It's kind of up in the mountains in the Appalachians up there. In that very, very uh, western part of Maryland, that very thin part, kind of out by West Virginia. You know, if I opened a billiards hall in uh, Cumberlands, I'd call it uh, Q Cumberlands. Hugh Cumberlands. Yep. That's a good one there. Probably have a grocery store attached. With a wide selection of cucumbers. Headed into game number 45. Our new teams are making their way over. No. Attention spectators, we have a red pathfinder I just about freaked out. You have a red Pathfinder back home, don't you? No, I have a I have a red rental car. Oh. You know what? You know what? I, I wouldn't put it past that vacant team to be going out and slashing tires. Yep, could be. Did Verity come over and talk to you? No, she didn't. One of her teammates came over to talk to me about my horrible British Verity Crawley impersonation yesterday. So she, the, the, the one who came over to talk to me is actually from Australia, and she was laughing because um, I said that when I do an, uh, a British accent, it comes out Australian sometimes. And she said that I did not sound Aussie at all. And so I was like, all right, so it was good enough. But with Savannah College of Art and Design coming back onto the live stream pair, I'm going to have to bring the accent back. It is coming back.
minutes, we're underway here on the men's side. The women are getting started here as well. Lindsey Wilson College and Robert Morris University men on the right lanes. North Carolina a State University, coached by Kim Terrell Kearney. And Savannah College of Art and Design, coached by Verity Crawley. It's going to be an interesting one. But Kim Terrell Kearney, one of the most talented female bowlers of all time, uh, going up against uh, potentially one of the most talented. Uh, yeah, it's true. Well, hello, my name is Simon, <laughs> and I like to do drawings. That's from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> she, Verity's got her team in the huddle. I wonder if she's saying, "All right, girls, it's time to it's time to uh, make a wrong answer to you. Uh, make sure you use all of your heart." She's looking back here, giving me a smile. She knows I'm talking about her. <laughs> She's laughing. She's like, hey, that's not how I sound. That's not what I sound like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She knows we're talking about her. Oh, she does know. Standing up for this. <clears throat> I think I'm going to stand up as well. I'd like to kind of a uh, couple of good match, good good women's match going on here. And then you got the uh, the top, the men, uh, the the men that are on top of the leaderboard. Kind of get an idea of where they're playing the lanes going to the lunch break. Have they moved in yet? Have you know? Did you notice? No, I haven't. So we'll take a look here. I know that they spent yesterday morning playing uh, a little bit of the outside part of the lane. No soup for you. The soup Nazi from uh, Seinfeld. Yep. Great episode. No soup for you. like Michael Martell, lefty from Robert Morris, is anchoring the team 
today. And we found out that he's not related to the model Rick Martel from the WWE. He is not, although, that, I, I don't know, I'll, have, I'll ask him, because the pictures that you pulled up yesterday um, did look a little bit similar. I could see a little bit of resemblance there. Uh, that noise you heard off in the background, I believe, was Lincoln Memorial University picked up a split on a four-bagger. They started strike spare four-bagger and picked up a big split there on the seventh. I'm looking forward to seeing the standings when they come in after 44 games. I'm excited to see what's going on on the women's side and what happened to that six, that, set, that second through sixth position, if we're still that tight or if there was some separation created. Daniel Hansen up now on lane 27. And it looks like they have begun to creep inside just a little bit. Is Kenny Ryan not bowling? Uh, I don't know. Well, Dan is the leadoff, so it looks like uh, Dakota Vostri is the two-hole. So Kenny maybe three or four. I would assume if uh, Michael Martell is anchoring, that the left must be uh, looking okay. So maybe he has Kenny and Michael in the four or five hole. Robert Morris off to a good start. I just got uh, I just got tweeted at. I just got uh, I just got tweeted at by Verity. That says uh, I wonder if the English accent from at Matthew Gasson will appear. And uh, it did already. It did. So uh, yeah, we're going to be using it a little bit throughout the uh, throughout the set here. We have a developing situation too. We have front eight. Oh, we do. Yeah. What's that? Okay, UAB. University of Alabama, Birmingham. So Mike's gonna go ahead and get that, uh, that mobile camera set up down there, see if we can get University of Alabama, see if we can get our first 300 of the weekend on camera. And it looks like they, looks like they missed there. Went a little high and left a 6-10 and a pin came across, took out the 6-pin, leaving the 10-pin. So they're going to be on 279 pace through nine frames. Clean start here for Savannah College of Art and Design. Yeah, it looks like Kenny Ryan is not bowling. Yeah, there's something about Robert Morris and uh Putting uh, super. I will say, uh, I, I will say that uh, bowling for DJ, he does like to uh, play around a little bit sometimes, and sometimes just bench people for the sake of benching them and let other people get some playing time. And they do have a commanding lead over second place. So. Yeah, I hear you. He does have a very interesting strategy of coaching. He definitely does, but he is, uh, he is a very good coach. One of the best uh, physical game coaches I've ever worked with. I actually, it was one of the reasons I went back to Chicago a couple weeks ago, uh, went and got a lesson from him, and I've been bowling well again ever since. I'm a little traditional when it comes to uh, bowling and bowling lineups. I uh, 
I kind of live and die by the by the crafty veterans. Yeah. Trust the now, experience. Now, if I'm coming in a Tier 2 tournament or something, I want to give some guys some experience. You might see me do that if I was a coach. But at the sectional level, pedal to the metal. No games are taken for granted. If you're not in my... If you're not in my top five and I happen to pull you in because a guy's struggling, so be it. But otherwise, you uh, you just hope that next year you have a good enough year that you don't have to worry about getting a ball in here or there. Right. But there's a lot of different coaching philosophy. Very, I'm very old school like that. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure every coach has a, a little different philosophy. I'm not so sure anybody want to bowl at my program with that sort of philosophy. No, I'm sure that you'd, you'd, you would attract plenty of talent. University of Wisconsin Whitewater just off the live stream to the right on lane 30. They'll be on lane 29 in the second part of this Baker set. Try to keep an eye on them and see what kind of scores they put up this set. They're still kind of uh, knocking on the door. That's what I'm going to do, Matt. I'm going to become a college coach. You should. Quit live streaming. You should. I wonder if they'd let me live stream and coach at the same time. Maybe. I'd be able to give some really good insight as to what's going on. Yeah, and Flanagan's team is in dead last because he's too busy live streaming. <laughs> and eating pretzels. Yeah, and, and just so you know, he brought eight people, and he's only bowled five of them, and they're in last. Do you think he might make a lineup change? <laughs> Robert Morris with 224 that game. Uh, I'm not too sure what they bowled their four game set before this one. I know they bowled over 900 in the second set this morning. North Carolina A&T State University with a solid little game going. Can strike out here for uh, 212. And uh, Savannah College of Art and Design with a split in the 10th frame. They had a pretty solid go game going through eight at two splits down the stretch. Six, seven, 10. Still a, a, a makeable split, but a, a difficult one at that. And a 180 start for Lindsey Wilson College on lane 28. So two open frames to finish the game for SCAD. 182, not a terrible score, uh, but I think they were definitely looking for a little more out of that with the way the first eight frames started. And with that strike and some good count here, North Carolina A&T into the 200s. I've got a hard copy of updated scores through 44 games. Robert Morris, Illinois, still atop the leaderboard, 92-28. They are almost five, about 550 pins or so ahead of second place. Robert Morris with 92-28. Lincoln Memorial in second place with 86-96, about 110 pins ahead of Savannah College of Art and Design. They had a monster set, this last set, to get them up into third place. 268, 192, 178, 255. 
they are now 37 pins ahead of fourth place, St. Francis, Illinois, with 85.50. 53 back from them in fifth place, Emmanuel in sixth place now, Pikeville. Pikeville really struggled that last set going 150, 179, 162, 179. They are at 84.60. They are now 90 pins back from fourth. And University of Wisconsin Whitewater still struggling down the stretch here. 199, 187, 199, 161. They have 83.38. They how, are, yeah, they how are, many are they out? 212 pins behind fourth place. All right, so I want to deliver some insight. I just went down and talked to Sean Walkner and Nick Crumble. I wanted to go down and find out what is going on with the University of Wisconsin Whitewater. And this is what they told me. First of all, Sean said yesterday was just a horrible day of shot making. His players, he'd say, what, what, are, you, what, are, you, what are you looking at? 12. They hit seven. Just bad shot making yesterday, and he's pulled everybody in and out of the lineup, trying to change everything, move everything around he possibly can. He said when they do get strikes going, then they start missing easy spares right behind it. He's like, this has just been the worst combination. Everything's been going wrong for them. And not only that, but I'm just kind of looking at their demeanor right now, and they just they kind of look defeated. I'm looking at all of them. They they don't have a whole lot of energy down there right now. Uh, a lot of shoulders kind of hanging. Hopefully uh, during this lunch break they can kind of refuel and regroup and, and come back and try and make well, a run at it Sean, this afternoon. Well, Sean said to me, he goes, if we're within 200, we can get there. Absolutely. He, he actually has seen a, a, a turn in their demeanor the last couple of games. Uh, when I was down there, I heard uh, a couple of, come on, boys, let's go. Let's keep the intensity up. Let's go. So uh, Wisconsin Whitewater, they, uh, they know their backs are up against the wall. They know they're the second ranked team in the country coming into this tournament and they know that they are going to have to make up 200 plus pins you know in the last 16 games today so it'll be interesting to see what they do and how they get there absolutely and i was just saying uh, right before you walked over savannah college of art and design on the men's side uh with a really big set that last set 268 192 178 255 shot them up into third place on the ladies' side, St. Francis still in the lead there by 220 pins. 87-35. Maryland Eastern Shore now up in second place, 85-16. In third place, Savannah College of Art and Design on our live stream pair right now, 85-03. In fourth place, Alabama Birmingham with 84-80. They also just bowled a 270 game, uh, that first game of that next set with the front eight, so they should be moving up a little bit there. In fifth place, Robert Morris, Illinois ladies, 84-61. They are currently 19 back from fourth. Pikeville in sixth place, 83-89. So there is now 120 pin difference. The, the difference about doubled there in that last set, but 120 pin difference between second and sixth place there on the ladies' side. Uh, still anything could happen. with these last 20 Baker games. Robert Morris strikes and opens. So far this game, a few more strikes than opens. Still a possible 221 on the board for Robert Morris if they clean this up and strike out. Lindsey Wilson getting up in the seventh, working on a spare. A possible 237 on the board for them. Savannah College of Art and Design had a really good game going that last game through eight frames and, and split in the ninth and the tenth. Coach Verity Crawley pulled them into a circle and said, ladies, can't be giving away games like that. It's not acceptable. We're gonna have to start making some lineup changes.
they're in they're in right now though they are in they're in third place right now on the ladies side they're third third place on the ladies and the men's side right now a good double from them gets them back to about even overall in the game with that single pin miss in the third looking to extend this string here North Carolina a t clean through three uh, but but does have a split up in the fourth South Carolina Art and Design, 23rd ranked in the country coming into this event. Yeah, they've bowled well all weekend. Um, they, even in the uh, even in the singles portion of the event, uh, they had some some players do pretty well and get close to making the cut. So uh, it's a young program, and uh, there's a lot of potential there. Savannah College of Art and Design putting together a little string here down the stretch, four in a row, going to the ninth and tenth. But uh, hopefully they can finish this game out a little bit better than the uh, than the last game. Mike, I just saw you talking to Verity. Uh, were you able to get some insight on what's going on down there? Well, I just asked Coach Crawley if she was pleased with uh, the effort so far from the ladies, and uh, she said very much so. Um, well, no, but, she said very much so. Yeah, but they they didn't. Uh, they didn't come in here thinking that they were, you know, on the outside looking in. They came in with the attitude that they were going to make it and they're doing exactly what they wanted to execute on, on the game plan. On both sides of the coin, men and women. And, you know, I, I asked some questions just because, you know, I'm a bit of a novice here with the old college bowling. I'm not into, into this all the time. And I just asked, you know, uh, the art and design, you know, is that really what they focus on is, you know, per, like Adobe products, like a Premiere and... Photoshop and Illustrator and absolutely and I'm just sitting here my wheels are spinning like I'd like to recruit people from that college to potentially help me with what I'm doing you know so that's just kind of a cool little internship, light bulb went inside off inside bowling yeah internship. it went off a little light bulb went off in my head um, when I was down talking to them and uh, the other thing is I, I found out and I wasn't sure but you know this is second year for their program yeah that's what I was just saying right when you walked away they're a young program and they're a lot of success, a lot of really good players for a second year program. Uh, a lot of potential there. So good for them, good coaching staff. Robert Morris with a ho hum 209. Yep. Strikes and opens. It's like they went they went strike, they went and they went open double, open triple, open four bagger. <laughs> so they stepped it up a little bit after each open. And a much better ninth and tenth there for Savannah College of Art and Design. That gets them into the high twos, low two teens. And I know Verity is definitely saying, that is much better, that is much better, ladies. That's what I like to see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it up.
You know who would be a good assistant coach for Verity? Who's that? Mike Tyson. Mike. <laughs> How might that conversation go? Well, I can do the Verity voice. Can you do the Mike Tyson voice? No, you have to do both. I got to do both? Okay. I got to not laugh because I... Uh, uh, I got to think about how Mike Tyson even talks. I'm going to have to Google that one. I know he's got kind of that weird uh, that weird talk, that weird voice. So, uh, all right, all right, Coach Mike, what do you think here? What do you think? You're going to make the move here, ball change, 2-1? I don't know. I'm going to need to make a 2-1 to the left, I think, Verity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, pretty good, pretty good. There's some really good Morgan Freeman impersonators out there, like multiples. I want to have one join me for a broadcast one weekend when I do like a singles tournament. And I don't want him to ever leave character. It'll be Morgan Freeman the entire tournament. Yeah, he. Then that voice is just. That's just an iconic voice right there. Would that not be hilarious? Yeah, that would be good. If I was bringing the, and I would never bring it into the booth. I would just try to make people think that Morgan Freeman is there. <laughs> We talking about practice, man. The men switch lanes here halfway through this last Baker set of the morning. Two more games here and they're gonna head off to lunch. The ladies are finishing up the 10th frame here. Nice double there for Robert Morris, Dakota Vostri. One dollar here in the chat wants to know about the t-shirt sale on InsideBowling.com and you can save 15% with coupon code YouTube on InsideBowling.com. We've got some really cool shirts on there. Pop culture, very comfortable t-shirts. Check it out. I think you'll be pleased. Don't go to Kohl's to buy your t-shirts anymore. Go to InsideBowling.com. <laughs> Sean St. Clair, yeah, Caliendo would be great to have in my booth, but he's a little he's a little pricey. You don't think Morgan Freeman would be pricey? I'm not talking about the real Morgan Freeman. There's there's impersonators uh. like out there. And I'm like there's like YouTubers. I follow one guy. Verity's pulling her team in for a quick meeting before this third game. Alright girls, two two more games before this lunch break. I know you're hungry. <laughs> I know you're hungry, I'm hungry too. But we need to get through these last 20 frames. I want nothing but strikes from all of you. If you don't start striking a little bit more, I might not feed you. <laughs> I think she was getting a soup order. She was. I'll take the uh, chicken noodle, please. Chicken noodle. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty good.
Oh, oh, they're all checking out the live stream cameras on SCAD. There they Everybody, look at us. <laughs> They're waving. They are waving up here. Robert Morris continuing the trend. They actually have the exact same trend as last game if they strike here. Yeah, nine strikes for 209 the last game. Yeah, they went, they went open double, open triple, open four bagger. And that trend ends there. But let's see if they can get a mark other than a strike. Lindsey Wilson College looking to put together a couple of strikes here. Get back on track this game. And a double there for Lindsey Wilson. One game to go after this one. Then we will stop our stream and come back at 1245 Central Time for continuing coverage of the 2018 Intercollegiate Team Championships Sectionals Smyrna Edition. You know, Mike, when I first moved down here, I got made fun of because I kept calling Smyrna Smyrna. Everybody made fun of me. Smyrna and Smyrna. 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 Smyrna, Tennessee. Yeehaw. To go along with your uh, weight loss that we've talked about a little bit, Matt, I have a story, a personal story to tell. Okay. Today marks the six weeks without any sugar. Getting up at 4 a.m. to run 5K each day before breakfast, lifting weights and crunches during lunchtime. I've stopped eating meat, dairy, flour, and chunkies. No caffeine. The change in my body has already been fantastic. I feel great, zero alcohol. Eating a healthy diet that is a completely vegan, gluten-free, caffeine-free, and sugar-free. Working out two to four hours every day. I have lost 35 pounds of fat and gained muscle mass. I don't know whose post this is, but I was really proud of them, so I decided to copy, paste, and share. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Savannah College Art and Design off to a good start here. I don't know what Verity said to them before that game started, but it must have fired them up. All right, the, the more that you lot strike, the quicker we can go to lunch. <laughs> Probably right. Got 290 left. So I heard a, uh, a mind-boggling riddle today before we, uh, before we went on live. I was scrolling through uh, my Facebook news feed and it popped up. And it, the riddle is, what is four letters, sometimes is nine, but never is five? And if anyone at home can figure that out without Googling it, I would be impressed. 
Because I Googled it. <laughs> four letters. What is what is four letters? Sometimes is nine, but never is five. Does it work? No. Thought of nine to five. <laughs> work. That, yeah, that's actually a very good thought there. Four letters. All right, what is it? So, what is four letters? It's referring to the, the actual word what. What is four letters? Uh, yeah. Sometimes is nine. The, the word sometimes is nine letters. And never is also five letters. So, the, the riddle is actually within the, the riddle itself. So, it makes you think that the, there's something else there, but really you're just overlooking the answer. Uh, it's just, it's just a, a sentence, basically. You're thinking too much about it. Yeah, you're it. thinking too much about it. I, I've always been I've always been really intrigued by mind games like that. See if we can uh, save back-to-back -back open frames here on lane 26. North Carolina A and T, a little more of a difficult split on their lane. Much harder to convert. Four, six, seven. Looks like Kenny Ryan's going to get a fill ball here. Kenny strikes on his fill, yep. 198. It'll be interesting to see if they make a change here. I think at this point they're just kind of uh, moving some guys in and out. I'm getting a death stare right now from Chase Benitez. He's staring me down. <laughs> He's looking at me. And after a really good start there from uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, they slowed down a little bit in that seventh and eighth. Still 231 up on the board. She's like, she says, uh, that's okay, it's, it'll be all right, just clean it up here. Get off this with 211. Not, not, really, not really thrilled with those two opens, but I'll take 211. One more good game here, ladies. Mr. St. Clair in the chat wants to know, why are the women's side NCAA, but the men's aren't? Can you elaborate why? And yes, yes quite yes. simply. Would you like to take that or me? Uh, I'll let you take it uh, first. Okay. Uh, so uh, in the NCAA, they have uh, what's called Title IX. There's uh, quite a few different uh, titles. Um, and basically, it, Title IX states that there must be the same amount of women's sports as there are men's sports. And so at each, um, college. at each college, and so um, colleges such or, or, or sports such as football, for example, uh, would be like a men's sport. Um, there aren't any really women's football college teams, so, so they make a uh, another sport like bowling a women's sport. So NCAA does have women's at, uh, bowling as a NCAA sport, and uh, men's bowling is not. 
men's bowling is not is because it's way too competitive over on the men's side. Almost every school has a football team, right. a soccer team, a basketball team, et cetera, et cetera, but not every school has all of those sports for women. So in order to balance out everything, there were a lot of schools looking for sports to add to get the perfect balance. And, there's, and yeah, and there's still this NCAA bowling schools popping up all over the place because they want to add, in order for them to add a men's team that they want to add, they have to add, add a women's team. Right, and bowling right now is growing right. in the collegiate ranks. So really a great question. Yep, and then uh, there's different, uh, you know, there's different uh, types of. Uh, I don't think the right word is conferences. Uh, NCAA is a, uh, a kind of a governing body more so than a conference, right? Yeah, but they they want to get to conferences, from what I understand. Right, but uh, the, I'm talking about in terms of like NAIA. There's there's NAIA schools, um, which is a, a kind of like what NCAA is, just on a, a smaller scale. Um, and NAIA, there's, there's men's NAIA teams, uh, such as Robert Morris University, Weber International University, um, and, and they compete here on the men's side. Game 48 of 64, then we'll be back at 12.45 today with you. It's only an hour break. Yeah, it's going to go quick. It's an hour from uh, from finish here to when practice starts or when they go back live for more competition? I think practice. Practice? Practice is at 12.30. Oh, practice at 115, they said? Yeah, 115. So we've got uh, probably about an hour and a half once all is said and done. Looks like the men are going to finish up just a couple of frames before the women. Women are just getting started. Their 16th game of the morning. Last game of this set. Women, the men are about halfway done. Uh, two good games going so far on the men's side. Possible 259 on for Lindsey Wilson halfway through the game. Possible 268 for Robert Morris. Wisconsin Whitewater just off your screens to the right, lane 29, still struggling to put anything together. Um, through uh, through six frames here, they can still they can still strike out this game for the last six. To bowl 224, but um, they're going to really need to uh, start start putting something together here when they get back from lunch if they're going to want an opportunity to get there. Uh, the good news, though, is that uh, this is kind of where they made their run yesterday. Uh, they did they did make a little bit of a run back at the uh, at the top four. So uh, hopefully the, the lanes will kind of break down a little bit and become a little bit more scorable, and uh, we'll see some bigger scores this afternoon from all the teams that are looking to kind of jump in and, and keep it close.
feel like the men's teams are even closer to the lanes today. Yeah, everybody's, you know, it's, you know, there's 64 games of Baker, so when it's game, you know, 12 of 64, you know, the game matter. You don't want to dig yourself a hole or anything, but, you know, you're not to say you're not as focused, but you're going to get more and more focused as those as those final games start to uh, start to come down, and they really, really start to matter down the stretch. You're going to see uh, everyone really close to the approaches this afternoon. All the teams that are close are going to hear everyone getting loud, a lot of emotion. And for all but four teams on both the men's and the women's side, the season will end this afternoon. Yes, it will. This is amazing. The men are going to finish before the women. Yeah, they had that slowdown uh, uh, in that third set when Alabama Birmingham had to move over. I'm just wondering if there was some type of a lane break up or break, breakdown or hold up down there that uh, they kept them from getting down here. Savannah College of Art and Design clean through five, working on a Dutch 200. North Carolina A&T, four bagger. Yep. And where are they sitting at in the standings after 44? They're in eighth. Yeah, they've really, you, you were talking about it earlier, how they've really improved throughout this event. They have, and they're, I mean, they're 400 pins out. It's, it's a bit of a, a reach to get there, but uh, it's definitely possible if they put together a couple of big sets. Looking at this sheet here, they have a 128, a 143, and a 149 in there. You know, if they clean those games up, I, I mean, 400 pins. I mean, you look. You look at that. You got there's four sets left. They got to. They got to win. Uh, be above the pace by about 400. Uh, uh, by about 100 a set. You gotta. Gotta figure about 850 a set could get them pretty close, on average. So. Chase Benitez with a strike in the ninth. Michael Martell going to get up in the 10th, trying to get all the pins he can get for Robert Morris. Possible 208 on the board there. Nice double there from Savannah College of Art and Design. One more strike here in the ninth, set up the 10th frame. They have a pretty good game on the board. They are currently sitting in third place on the ladies' side. Only 13 pins behind second. Not sure what University of Maryland Eastern Shore bowled this set. They were in second.
A great shot there on the ninth. Savannah College of Art and Design setting up their anchor bowler for the 10th frame, possible 239 on the board. That would be a, a, a really good momentum gainer going into lunch. Great shot there. Cameron Strombeck, lane 25. Great shot there. That puts them in the 220s. 2-11 the game before that. It could have been a little more. They had a couple of opens down the stretch. Another good shot there by Cameron Strombeck on lane 25. Puts them in the two teens or so. Ring 10 there on lane 26, good shot. It's gonna put them right around 225, 228 it looks like. All right girls, that was a very good set. Very pleased. Let's all go the way relax. around this last game, all all uh, all the teams bowled pretty well. Yeah, last they set. did. They did. Everyone was. I think everyone kind of relaxed and was like, "All right, we need to strike here and, and go to lunch." So with this spare delivery, it will end our broadcast. I'd like to thank everybody for watching today on Inside Bowling in collaboration with Bowl TV. Don't forget if you're not subscribed to Inside Bowling or Bowl TV, make sure you give us a subscribe. You get notified when we go live. We will be back with you in about an hour and 10 minutes with continuing coverage here from Smyrna as we figure out which four teams from the men's and women's divisions will make it into the ITC Nationals here being held in April in Lincoln, Nebraska at Sun Valley Lanes. Matt, thanks for joining me. No problem, thanks for having me. I wanna thank Gary Brown. And Brandon here on site from USBC and the entire staff here at Smyrna Bowling Center. I'm Mike Flanagan. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in about an hour and ten minutes here on Inside Bowling.